like show business. Bullshit. Bullshit. Absolute rap. Harvey Goldsmith is one of the most feared men in show business. You fucking great geniuses, get real. Alongside Bob Geldof, he was the mastermind behind Live Aid, the biggest gig of all time. He is, without question, one of the great impresarios, certainly in our history. In his 40-year career, he's promoted the world's greatest stars. But now, Harvey faces his toughest challenge yet giving himself just six months. You're fucking nuts. Harvey's lending his showbiz expertise... I just think you're barking mad. ..to six acts in dire need of a boost. Smiley, Miley, get me out of here a bit later on. This week, Harvey locks horns with former Radio 1 DJ Mike Reed, now with struggling radio station Big L, which is losing 50k a month. Hi, everybody. This is the worst radio station I've ever seen in my life. Uh, we work our balls off here. We work really, really hard. And he's referring to us as a Boy Scout camp and stuff like that. Harvey's not happy with the DJs. With me, I'd fire the whole bloody lot of them and program it from home. And as for the management... I think Chris is a complete fucking dickhead. Four hours from London, Frinton-on-Sea in Essex is for many people the final port of call. It's a strange place from which to try to change the face of British radio. But one man has a vision, a vision of the past. You see, I find all the other radio stations in this country quite dull. And as a 13-year-old boy, I remember the Pirates starting in the 1960s with Radio Caroline. I was sitting and listening to the Beatles when they were played for the first time on the radio. It absolutely made my day. It actually made my life. Quick change. I'd love to have been a Beatle. I've sometimes called myself the fifth Beatle. Above a building society on Frinton High Street, Ray Anderson's created his very own pirate radio station, where, contrary to radio wisdom, he lets the DJs play whatever takes their fancy. Unfortunately, with few listeners and even fewer advertisers, Big L is losing 50 grand a month. It's the heart and soul of rock and roll, Big L. Ray's pinning his hopes of dominating the airwaves on housewife's favourite, Diddy David Hamilton. Are you having a great time? Well, we'll soon put a stop to that. And secret weapon. Hi, I was wondering when you'd get around to me. Former Radio 1 breakfast DJ, Mike Reed. Hey, it's Alan Partridge. How are you doing out there in Radio Land? Uh, sadly for my sins, I, I've been, been punished with being an ideas man. Hi, everybody. And I'm, I'm one of those weird creative engine rooms that comes up with ideas. Walk this way. Mike's latest great idea has been to persuade Ray to splash out 30 grand on a week of outside broadcasts. I'm smiley Miley, get me out of here a bit later on as well. In Mike's glory days, circa 1982, his Radio 1 roadshow attracted huge crowds and big stars. Times have changed. Uh, but appearing in Clacton until September, uh, it, it's impossible. They can't shake him off. He is the legendary Jimmy Crickets. I mean, friends of mine on other stations, I won't name the stations or the friends, who go, you're so frustrated. I go in every day, but I am so frustrated. And they listen to my programme and go, I really envy you. Oh, don't do nothing, 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 nothing. And when you do nothing, you don't do it. There's one not insignificant problem. Big L's transmitter isn't yet working, and they're advertising a station that no one can hear. Entertainment mogul Harvey Goldsmith's been asked to help turn the business around. I've tried to listen to the station on their AM frequency, nothing. I then went onto the website, which is the worst website I've ever seen, and it just doesn't work. And yet, as I understand it, they're going to do a big promotion. What on earth they're promoting, I've got no idea. I was in the Himalayas on an adventure holiday. And a kid the only way I could listen to this station was by tuning into Sky Digital. And when I did tune in, unfortunately, what I heard was just rubbish. I took my dog for a walk along the beach. 
He's a black and white dog. Well, the license is cheaper. Harvey's come all the way to Frinton to find out more. I'm Harvey Goldsmith. Lovely to meet you, Ray Anderson. How do you do? I'm very well. How about you? I'm good, thank you. Good. Interesting journey. It was, I bet. I bet you think it's a strange place to put a radio station. I think it is. Don't do nothing. And when you do nothing, you don't know when you're done. And how are you doing? Terrible. I mean, when I say terrible, the, the audience, the programmes, the sound is going great. He told a group of students, he said, to live a life of cheer. The revenue stream is atrocious. So is the station losing money? It's losing fortunes. Don't do nothing. So if I understand this correctly, you have a website that doesn't work mm -hmm. and you have a problem with transmitter. Yep. And yet you're doing a week of promotion. Yes. Why? Uh, I mean, we know that on a good day we, we could get 1,000, 1,500 people, which we'd be happy with. And what does that cost? The whole week is going to probably cost us about 30 grand. To week. get 1,500 people a time? Well, not just that. We're entertaining Very the expensive audience. audience. Well, we're entertaining the audience. But then you, you've got to buy your audience in this business. You know, you've not got at to that price, you don't. This station is totally nuts. Who on earth would spend £30,000 promoting a radio station when the one thing you can't do is hear it? What's even crazier is besides the fact that Ray is clearly insane, is somebody owns this station and they're paying for it. I'd like to meet these people and just understand why on earth they're throwing all this money away. Uh, good morning, sir, says Adrian the Norfolk Nutter. Well, good morning to you, Nutter. Uh, I hope your weekend went well. It did, as it happened. With few listeners and even fewer advertisers, struggling radio station Big Al is losing up to 50k a month. Harvey's in Birmingham, putting on Bruce Springsteen. He's tracked down the station's financial backers, radio novices Ian McGregor and Adam Barwell, and asked them to meet him backstage. There are some very simple things that need fixing, but they need somebody to tell them to fix it. If something drastic isn't done soon, you are literally throwing your money away. My estimates are you're in for half a million quid plus, and I don't understand if anybody in that station has a clue about how to get an audience. One would assume that Mike and David would understand that. All they kept talking about, we love it because we've got the freedom to play what we like. Well, then, Go and do it in your home, you know, and have a little radio station in the kitchen, you can hear it in the lounge. But in my opinion, Ray's just not up to it to run the station. What we've now done, in fact, is to, is to um, interview. We've got a new station manager who's starting have you? soon. Is he experienced? He knows the um, DJs have worked with Mike Reed and with David Hamilton before. You've got a new station manager, but you, with respect, are going to control him, otherwise he'll get into Frinton and I'll lay money on it. He'll end up being like them. Three minutes past nine the time. This is Big Al playing the classics 24 hours a day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is that croakiness or just huskiness or just merely sex appeal? Improbably, Big Al's founder, Ray Anderson, former Radio 1 DJ Mike Reed, and the station's other big name, Diddy David Hamilton, share a large detached house on the outskirts of Frinton. Well, welcome to our humble home. If you care to step this way, sir. Well, this is my little bedroom. I opened up the wardrobe and I thought, this is tremendous. I can keep all my clothes here. I don't have to take them home every week. But then all of a sudden I realised that the other side was another pair of doors. And through the doors came... My jacket, Mike I think. Reed. My jacket. Nicking my clothes. <laughs> New manager Chris Veazey has arrived from London, moved into the Big Al house, and is fitting in nicely. Tonight, uh, Mike's playing tennis till about 7 o'clock. Dave is going to sort some records out. Ray is looking for a boat for us to move to on the Thames, so I said I'd do dinner. He's got to get in there and sort out the product. He's got to forget about promotion and marketing and rest control of that station away from the presenters. I hope this guy is strong enough and has got the experience enough to get to grips with the tea party that's going on up in Frinton. 
Is this wine for consumption? Because if it is, I'm, I'm gonna. Would you like a glass now? I'll have a small glass. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have a large one. I don't care. Okay. But despite the lack of listeners and advertisers, Chris and the Big Al team are convinced their products are already great. I think, I think anybody who knows about this radio station, and we have to spread the word, mm. will know that there is not a radio station in this country that is playing better music. There's no question about that. We can play anything from the 50s right up until yeah. today. And, and people, it all seems The dangerous people will mm. copy that format. There's nothing okay. to stop. Classic Gold sitting down next week saying, we like what Big Al are doing. Let's do that. We've got the product. The product is great. What yeah. we have to do is we mm. have to get it to a bigger audience. Mm. And when we've got it to yeah. a bigger audience, <clears throat> then we're in business. OK. Scrabble, darlings. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. Fortified by red wine and twiglets and convinced they have the best radio station in the UK, Chris has decided to shoot a TV commercial and tell the world. Mom! I heard you on the wireless back in 52. Mom! I think initially we were going to do sitting in the studio, uh, just saying, you know, hi, listen to Big L 1395, and me being a crazy man, I thought, oh, that's a bit boring. And I was thinking about the Guinness ad on TV where they take the three drinkers back from the pub, whisk them back through, through prehistory. Put on the snow coat! Put on the snow coat, mate! Action. The finessing and detail makes the difference between a quality advert and something that looks cheap. You, you have to show that when you run a radio station that you can do every job on the radio station. And if that means lying on the ground and holding it, Elvis said he doesn't blow over, then that's fine. And cut, that's very good. Harvey Goldsmith, co-founder of top London station XFM, has given Chris Veazey two months to settle in at the Big L. I'll do for starters. And now he's back in Frinton, expecting to see big improvements. I think we run our radio station here on less than 1% of the cost of Radio 2. Now, the question is, is the output from Big L only 1% of what you hear on Radio 2? But whilst 8 million Radio 2 listeners wake up to Wogan, Big L's listeners wake up to Williams. Coming up next is the Mike Reed Show from 9 o'clock till 1 with uh, Mike Reed. 1 o'clock we've got David Hamilton. He'll be here from 1 till 5. The Big Al. It's not exactly the new dawn Harvey had been hoping for. I've spoken to a lot of people in radio in the UK. Mm. Ironically, a fair amount of them know about the station. They do. But they all have one word to say. It's crap. How long have you been here? Uh, well, I've been a couple of months here now. Right. Uh, and I'm really just trying to take the radio station out of uh, where we were up to the next level. So Why does it take so long? Because you could fix it like that. You could change it in a heartbeat. That's what this is all about. If I was coming in here, as you are, I would be giving this lot such a fucking bollocking. I would sit everybody down and say to them, I've got three months to get your station together. Otherwise, I'm out of here because we've got to go out and get some revenue. If we don't get any revenue, you ain't getting paid. And this sounds like it's a bit like the fun house for the kids. Every month that goes by costs Big Al's owners up to £50,000. Harvey's concerned at the lack of progress, but Chris has other things on his mind. Another glass of wine. The first cut of his brand new commercial has arrived. Play. Oh, here's the play button. Oh, yeah. 
That's a great DVD. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe it well, needs I, a polish. I'm, I'm left wondering what what is it all about? What are you advertising? The bits where you see the back are pointless. So it's money. probably the editing that would would help. What what is yeah. boring is all the, the the back of your back. Well, that's the bit we yeah. want to cut out. Yeah. Yeah, they need to go out. Well, we're going to take them out. Which will make it shorter. <laughs> we're going to take them out. Yeah, but when it's slowed down, we can extend each yeah. scene. Yeah. That's what yeah. Do, yeah. You can oh, slow the pictures down, but you can't slow the music down. The music no, 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 we don't want to slow the music down. down. Well, you can't slow the music down. We don't want to slow the music down. We're going to make a track exactly the right length. We're going to slow the pictures down. Which I think you can get into 30 seconds. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, we're, we're going to slow the... We I take know. the back bits out, slow it down. I know, I know. But you will get that into 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Cool. While the Big L top brass grapple with complex issues related to the back of Mike's front, Harvey's called financial backers Ian and Adam down to Frinton. I don't quite understand what they tell you, but it's a bit like a tea party up there. <clears throat> I mean, my, I, my, my, and I, my don't what, I don't know what you're being yeah. told. And I, I do hope, for your benefits, that you're not being sold a kind of bill of goods that um, kind of lead you to believe that certain things are happening, because, in my opinion, it's actually bugger all happening on that station. Yeah. I'd like to pick up the challenge and say, OK, I'd like to have a crack at the breakfast show and see if I can make that work. I think that Gary, who runs the breakfast show, needs some real guidance <laughs> and see if, in the next couple of weeks, I can do what Chris hasn't done over the last three months. Fantastic. Let's go. So what have you been, guys been cooking up, then? What they've agreed to let me do is to take over the breakfast show for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and uh, work with Gary. If you like what I'm doing with the breakfast show, um, then I want to work with you to uh, kind of work through the rest of the, uh, of the station mm -hmm. to see if we can just focus it a bit. I try to discover Wasting no time at all, Harvey's asked Gary to come to London. If he's to stand any chance of improving, he needs to hear a few home truths. Today's going to be quite difficult for Gary because he doesn't know we're having a focus group. As far as I'm concerned, my golden rule is listen to what your public wants and give it to them. The best music on the best station. Hold on to your pants. It's mad, it's bad, and it's on Big L. 1989 Aerosmith, love in that elevator. Or do you just love elevators? I suppose there are such things as elevator spotters. Oh, you get train spotters, bus spotters. Uh, even uh, ship spotting and aircraft spotting, but lift spotting. Gary Williams, you make me sick! <laughs> what we want to find out is what we're doing wrong. So the first thing I'm going to ask you, your impressions of that particular 15 minutes. It was just inane. There was nothing in those 15 minutes I was going to say, to get, almost to give me any reason to live, let alone listen. Any, any conversation that you did have was just at a mumbling drivel. Maybe it's for 10 to 12-year-olds. What did you think of the presenter's voice? Not suitable for radio, I would have thought, actually. What do you remember as, as a highlight? I liked it when it was over. I don't think there are any great faults with it. It's just that they just have to knock it into shape to what people want in the mornings. We've got a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. We got the thing. We got the thing. We got the thing. Now Gary knows where he's going wrong. Harvey's arranged for him to spend the rest of the day going over the basics with top radio consultant Ray Arthur. Every time you put a show together, you should be looking, what have I got here? Mm. What's, what's the balance? Mm. So that you can see that you've got information, you've got news, you've got traffic, you've got weather. Yeah. Once you get the fixes of information locked in, mm. well, then it gives you time here to mm. do the entertaining bits. No one's ever given him any direction. No one's ever sat down and actually written out his show. 
and said, well, have a look at the gaps there, see what you're doing. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Staggering. <laughs> From a programming point of view, I can't help but feel that the radio station is a bit of a hobby farm. Harvey's arranged with Big L's owners for consultant Ray Arthur to visit the station and meet with manager Chris Vesey. I never like to prejudge somebody before I've met them because I, I think that's, that's an awful thing to do. I mean, he looks a bit of a geek in his picture. <laughs> it's very easy to say you're a consultant and put you up as a, an expert in any field. Very well, Would you take it. advice from that person? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We probably will be. Hello, Big L. Well, I do know that Sharon the Healing Poet has been doing healing poetry uh, in Germany over the weekend, so much travel international thought for the day. After a four hour journey from London, Ray's arrived in Frinton. Probably meet a few of the other people at the station, hopefully, the station manager and the uh who's also the program director, I think, so we'll have a discussion with him to find out what the, um, the strategy for the station is and what sort of vision they have. What I'm hoping to see is a, a, a pool of creativity and enthusiasm. But it appears the pool is dry. A bit of a ghost ship today. Everyone's out looking at boats and things and... Uh, that Friday feeling. Yeah. yeah. Ten past five and there's nobody here. Unbelievable. I'm in shock. I can't believe that this radio station survives at all. There's nobody there. We waited for the manager who I really needed to see today. He hasn't shown up. You know, I feel sorry for Gary because he's got no direction, he's not included in anything, and he's just off there trying to make something himself. It's just a disgrace. I'm really actually upset because if we've started to work with Gary and, and, and really getting on side and learning and now got a new sense of vibrancy about him, you'd think the rest of them would be there to kind of help back him up, listen to it. There's clearly no um, relationship from one presenter to the next. And quite frankly, I think Chris is a complete fucking dickhead. And if he, he was in my employee, he would have been out the door yesterday. Harvey telling me that he's got uh, his experts coming in to turn my breakfast show around. Well, we all have the talent to turn a breakfast show around and we're all experts in our field. It's a case of whether you've actually got enough time and staff and resources to execute that. Despite the rest of the station's complete indifference, Gary spent the last week working hard to raise his game. Yeah, it's going great. Um, we just started another new feature where we do a request hour, and we called it the People's Playlist, so I thought that was astonishing. Chris has finally found time to show some interest. Uh, morning to Roy, Martin, Eric and Sam. Can you please play something from the Fab 500? How about this one? It's 23 now before 9. This is the Big L. I think I will disappear out of here because you should have rehearsed that before you did it. Did it earlier? You did it earlier? Yeah. It didn't sound like it. OK. I'll let you get on. You can always find somebody to do this fucking job yourself. That's all right, Gary. Don't get upset, mate. There's the controls. Don't you get worry. on with it. <laughs> if he doesn't turn up in the morning, uh, there's going to be a quiet station. Hurry, why don't you come back? But he won't ever work here again. It's all part of life's rich tapestry. <laughs> I'm actually pissed off that he's not supporting you. I, I'm gobsmacked, to be honest. I, yeah. I've never heard of, a, of anybody doing that midstream no. on a live radio show to no. somebody who's running the programme. It just, it's nonsense. I'm planning to meet them on Monday afternoon or first thing Tuesday. Yep. And we will listen to your programme on Monday. OK. I'm with you, my son. That's what I'm here for. Well, thank you, Harvey. OK. It'll be a cracking show. All right, smashing. Thanks. This is the worst radio station I've ever seen in my life. They've got no idea what is going on. 
They have no management whatsoever. There's another CV coming. Someone wanting to work here. And we've given Gary a complete new lease of life. He was fired up when he left here. He's, and the proof's in the eating. He made the changes. He suddenly got very animated about what he's doing. So for me, I can pack up now because I've won the day. You know, that was to get this breakfast show changed and make it happen. And I've only just started with it. And I'm going to stick it up Chris Veazey's backside to prove to him, which is what I said I would do when I went up there, that we can make the changes, so why the hell can't he? Because we're keeping the dream alive. Straight after Get Your Act Together, turn over to E4 for the showdown where Harvey Goldsmith and the stars of The Big L will be reunited for the first time since Harvey walked out on them. And DJ Spoonie, Ed Stewart, Dr Fox and Nick Ferrari will be taking sides. Let's get your act together, The Showdown, on E4, right after this. Struggling radio station Big L is failing to attract listeners or advertisers and is losing up to 50 grand a month. In a bid to show that big improvements can be made fast, entertainment mogul Harvey Goldsmith has given himself just two weeks to turn the station's dismal breakfast show around. Sir Cliff Richard and the dreaming on the people's play. The two weeks are up, and it's the morning of the breakfast show on which Harvey's success will be judged. In London, he's listening to Gary with radio consultant Ray Arthur. Uh, all you have to do is get on the dog and bone. Oh, eight, Station manager Chris Veazey and Big L's owner Adam Barwell have come to judge if Harvey's succeeded. Gary Williams in the morning. You must be Ray. I am. Chris, how are I you? I saw your good picture. You. Oh, did you? Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Adam Lothier. Adam, good to meet you. Have a lovely day. Back tomorrow from five. Join me sometime then. Mike's next. So, switch it off. To me, I think I've won my challenge. Gary's really lifted himself up. Don't you agree, right? Mm, very much so. Certainly he does, yeah, I mean, he, he is better. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I just wanted to prove that with a bit of care and attention, you can make changes and you can actually make it happen pretty quickly. He has actually had all the same training from me as Ray has given him. You say you've spent a lot of time with Gary. Um, that's not the impression I'm getting, unfortunately. What I want to do is really get moving and come up with a relaunch for you in March. Great. The station doesn't have a clear identity. There's no question about it. We think that we've come up with an idea for you. And that's Big L growing old disgracefully. It's for older people who still feel young. There's loads of them out there. People who grew up going to shows, who grew up going to festivals, who lived through the punk era, who went through all of those strands of music which you play, we need to get moving on this pretty quickly and to really start to kick ass with the rest of the presenters because for them it's a jolly up. I can play some records this afternoon, what fun, and everyone can listen to it. Well, well bollocks it, to it. it, it get off your fucking ass and sell. Back at Big L Towers, Chris has called a meeting. We can't have dinners that take too long to prepare because we can't be bothered to wait for them. You end up getting pissed before you have your dinner. Right, well, Mike, you... Clear on. This whole idea of growing old disgracefully is perfect for this station. It's going to drag them out of this mess that they're in at the moment and give them a unique identity. So I'm really excited about it. But Harvey's ideas aren't going down too well with the troops. But I, I have to feel, though, that some of um, what Harvey's done, I mean, maybe, you know, a schoolboy could have done. When I moved in here, it took me two weeks to get the real feel of the station and know where to take it. And get the cooking right. What about this as a strap line? More music, more fun. <laughs> Four weeks and tens of thousands of pounds later, and Harvey's heard nothing from Big L. International. Hello. It's about a month since we last spoken, and I was just wondering what was going on. 
just carry on as normal down at the station. You know, we talked about some ideas when I last met you all. Yeah. What happened? Well, um... The, uh, obviously after... Uh, when we were all chatting, contemplating after our last meeting, we, um... The, uh, we weren't too keen. You know, we're fairly confident that if we can get people... ..tuning in, um, you know, really good the day we able to hold them. What we'd really like from you is... If you can, is to, is to come out up with some um, very cheap marketing ideas that are going to get us sort of in the public eye as much as we can, as cheaply as possible. Cheers, Bye. Thank you. Bye. They just want me to come up with some promotion and marketing ideas, but what exactly am I marketing? There's no reason why I should even put any effort into trying to promote a station that basically is going nowhere. In a bid to finally get through to the Big L team, Harvey's asked Britain's foremost radio critic, Gillian Reynolds, the marketing director of one of the UK's largest radio groups, the MD of a top London production company, and a man who buys millions of pounds worth of radio advertising a year, to listen to Big L and give their honest opinion. Will we recognise any of these experts as Dragon's Den? <laughs> Gillian? Part of the satisfaction with any radio station is knowing that sooner or later, a favourite is going to come back. I'm not sure about that with you. It's like swimming in a muddy puddle. For me, it's a bit like my iPod. There's all sorts of rubbish in there. Some of Steve's niche stations will be running off 180 songs. Go to Radio 2, they'll be running off about 3,000 songs. But I bet you're running off 10,000 songs. 16. There you go. I'm not sure you know who you're talking to. I think you're talking to yourselves. What about the the general identity of the station. It, it sounds incredibly old-fashioned, but not old-fashioned enough to be retro or chic. And I looked at the pictures on your website. I mean, I don't know who's turning up to your road shows. It looks like four grannies and a dog. Um, I'd like to bring John into the discussion, because at the end of the day, um, he's the guy that's got the purse strings for the advertisers, which is going to keep the station alive. The, in the investment at the level that you're at would be something, you know, even being optimistic from my point of view, would be something like, you know, a spot campaign of something like £50 a week or something that we would, on, on the audience you have. What's, the, summary, what's the vision for it? What's the vision for it? It's quite clear there was a vision in the first place. Yeah. It was really to, to rekindle some of that spirit that was around okay. the pirate day. That's not working. So what's the vision now? Well, is it working? I don't know. I mean, I, I say we've got a radio station that is great fun when you work there, when you listen to the station. But commercially, it doesn't work. Well, so as long as, if you want to live in that dream world, as long as you can find benefactors like Ian and Adam, that's great. But at some point, you're no. not going to find that. I... And then what happens to your dream world? You've got to get real about this. Who's, who's the person on the staff that you've empowered to make this all happen? Chris. We have got the quality people who have been trained at the BBC, have been brought up through the BBC, we have all got those production values that Radio 2 had. I started out as a producer at Radio 2. I know what the values are there. That don't help, because all that saying, saying is wrong. can't compete with Radio 2. You can't, because you don't have people paying a bloody licence fee for you. Therefore, you're living or dying on your ad revenue, which yes, John will tell true. you. He's not prepared to advertise in at the moment because he doesn't know what or who you are. I know where I want to take the station, uh, but it, there are things... You can't just turn this station around overnight. No, that's no, bullshit. No, it's, 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 that's got bugger all to do with it. As long as you keep going the way you're going, they, at some point, are going to run out of cash. The key thing is don't market anything until you've got the music sorted and you've got the website in order. When a station's not working financially, and no one would know better than you, and changes have to be made, they are made bang, like that. I closed a radio station last week. The country music station that we ran uh, was losing 250k a year. We gave it six months. We could not make it work commercially. They'd like to lose 250k yeah. a year. They'd well, be really comfortable. <laughs> I think the question I'd like to ask my experts here is, each of you, would you invest in this station? No. No. Not quite. With some changes, maybe. No. OK. The single most important thing that I want you to do is to actually focus the attention of what it is you stand for. Even if it means changing the format, 
So I would actually like to get some answers out of you and hear from Chris by tomorrow night because I'm running out of time. For Big L's owners, Ian and Adam, it's been a rude awakening. I don't think we can sit around and think we're, we're doing really well because we're not. That's the bottom line. And, you know, it is fair to say that four you know, very experienced people there said they wouldn't invest in, in the station. And we do, I think, need to take on board very seriously what they said. The, the thing about lack of focus, I think it's right, you know. I, I, I think yeah. it's a problem. I think it's a branding problem. Mm. But then all the investment of two years of on air and publicity is all right, lost, right. all right. lost. That's, that's well, well, it, does matter. it does matter, it does matter, because you're going back to square one. Well, we don't have an audience. We don't really have an audience. Well, there is, there is an audience. We'll continue this off camera, if you yeah. don't mind. With their 24 hours up, the Big L team are back. Harvey's brought along another top radio advertising buyer to see what he makes of Chris's new grand vision for Big L. Um, one of the things we've implemented is um, an uplifting sound on the radio station uh, of the kind of songs that just lift you a little bit more. There's, it's not going to drop down at all, uh, the tempo-wise. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the whole feel of the thing, and you're lifting, you're just lifting all the time. Do you think that's going to work? I think it needs to be more targeting, so uplifting is fine, but it's knowing the genre of music to go with. But you're asking us to narrow cast again. You see, you're asking us to be like everyone else. What you're trying to do now only works to some extent when radio is subsidised. Now, whether you like it or not, you are in commercial radio. So my feeling is that if you're going to make some radical changes, make a radical change, but go to an area where you've got a shot at not only building up an audience quickly, but then being able to impress people like Patrick's business who will say, I've got an advertiser for that. My view still, 100% <laughs> down the line is, this whole notion of growing old disgracefully is what the audience you are actually aiming for um, want. Because those are the people that grew up with Jimi Hendrix, with, with Led Zeppelin, and they love listening to it, and they're a dedicated audience. You can make the station much more edgy. I can then help come up with some great ideas and some stunts to get this out and advertised. I mean, for example, we've found a plane that has a bed in it, in the back, and could be fantastic to use as a stunt of being growing old disgracefully. And, you know, we would, I've been thinking about coming up with a, um, um, a competition that you could run about people talking about their most embarrassing bedtime story or something like that, and you could get people to phone in and the winners join the Mile High Club. <laughs> but what I want out of you today is an answer to say, yes, we love it, yeah, we think it's going to work. Let's do it. OK, so we're going to roll with it. Yeah. It's just taking it one step further than we were going. Five steps further. Thanks very much. No problem. I think we've won the day. I finally got the message through to them. They've got to make some radical changes. It looks like they're going to do it. But it's really important that they're rigid now, that they start to focus in on all the music that fits the genre of what we're talking about, about people that have grown up with rock and roll, want to hear rock and roll, and don't want to hear syrup. Unfortunately, Harvey's high hopes are somewhat premature. Oh. Uh, we work our balls off here. We work really, really hard, and he's referring to us as a Boy Scout camp and stuff like that. Now, as an ideas person, um, I, I'm very good, it's what I spend my life doing. So I can come up with a thousand better ideas than the stuff he's come up with, um, because I can and it's what I do. I feel we've always had good enough programmes to go and sell to advertisers. Maybe. You know, mm. but we've not always had listeners. Them. Not enough listeners. I think this competition is going to be great. I've spoken to the press and the Sun and the Star and the Express and even PA and Reuters have all picked up on it. And I really now believe that it's not too late to save your station. <laughs>
the only way we'd move forward is with our own help. Now, Harvey might well say, oh, yeah, but you're not making any money. That's not my side of it. It's a shame we don't have a freezer here. Rather than sort of blundering on and saying, oh, well, let's put a bed in the sky and we'll get you some press. You know, it's a cheap, easy cop-out. If he said, oh, I had an idea to road shows, fine, we've done it. If he said, what I'm going to do for you guys, I'm going to produce a TV commercial for you, we've done it. Well said oh. and well put. And I think that's, that sums it all up. Sums it up. I fell asleep at the dinner table last night talking to David and I suddenly realised the answers I was giving him were not the answers to the questions he'd asked me and then I realised at midnight, it, after three bottles of wine, it was probably time to go to bed. <laughs> and I'm suffering today. Harvey's at the Royal Albert Hall putting on a series of concerts. Big L have had a week to prepare and by now the new sound should be in place and the Mile High Club competition in full swing. Adam, I'm actually getting seriously hacked off with what's going on with this competition or whatever. I went onto the website this morning and it's buried in the body of the website. You've got to look three times before you even know there's a competition. There's been pieces in the Express, I've done something in Sky, it's on Reuters, it's on PA. I've done my bit and from you lot, absolutely bugger all. I'm really upset about it to be honest. I just feel that Chris is taking a piss. I just think he wants to do everything possible for it not to happen and go away quietly. And if that's, that, that's the case, that's fine with me, but I'm out. I just think it's a joke, and I think if Ian and Adam don't realise by now they're being led up the garden path by their station manager, then they'll never learn, and I just don't want to have anything more to do with it. Down in Frinton, Chris has decided he knows best. My job is running radio stations, and that's what I'm doing here, and that is fine with me. Uh, I'm on course with what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. It may not be in line with what Harvey really has in mind for the radio station, but then I know the radio business better than he does. After the station owner's intervention, the competition is finally prominent on the station's website. But with only hours to go before it closes, Harvey's discovered an even bigger problem. I'm now going to try my fifth time of Listen Live Now. Deathly silence. Why do you think that is, Tommy? It's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, is Ian there, please? Speaking. Oh, hi, it's Harvey Goldsmith. Hello, Harvey, how are you? In truth, um, I'm not good at all. Somebody's got to look at this whole getting on air because I don't understand. I'm going to listen live now. I've clicked on it. It gives me options and nothing happens. It does take about 10 seconds sometimes for it to actually find the stream and click in. Well, I'll leave it for 10 minutes and there's nothing happening. Well, it just says, done. I don't really understand what Chris Veazey's got over you and Adam. But I think he's taking the piss, number one. Number two, I don't think he's in control of that station at all because he's petrified of, of Mike Reed and, to some extent, David. And I still think that they think there's a bloody tea party going up there in Frinton, and when the cat's away, the mice will play. I can't see the drastic changes that are supposedly to be made. I can't see the different thrust that's being put on it. I just feel that I'm banging my head against a brick wall with this lot. For the past six months, entertainment mogul Harvey Goldsmith has been trying to help struggling radio station Big L. At last, yes. some dinner. Given that they were hemorrhaging up to 50k a month, the station was surprisingly reluctant to see they had a problem. There is not a radio station in this country that is playing better music. There's no question about that. And even more reluctant to listen to Harvey. Some of um, what Harvey's done, I mean, maybe, you know, a schoolboy could have done. Things have got nowhere, slowly. Buggered, you're buggered. A school child can understand. Very simply, without income, you can't keep in business. They don't get it. And after six months of berating these people, explaining to these people, bringing experts to show these people what needs to do, these people still don't get it. 
how long can I continue giving them the simplest message of all? No audience, no advertisers, no money. No, they still want to be in their tea party every day, having a lovely time, and all is rosy in the garden. Well, guess what? It isn't. Harvey's made a decision about the Big L. Gentlemen, I've brought you here because I want to prove a point to you. You two could have owned these five cars twice. That's how much money I believed you'd thrown away. This is your station. You told you came on board we and joined. said we're going to try and change this station. We want it to be like Radio Two. Well, you can't be like Radio Two because you can't afford it. You don't have an audience big enough, and it's proven by the fact you haven't got enough advertising in that these guys don't have to keep pumping money in month after month after month to keep it alive. You're running this station like a bloody garden party up there. I've That's seen what you it think. with my own eyes. I think you believe need to spend me, I have. There, Harvey. And I think Ian and Adam are starting to come they're to that reality. They're very much behind what the station, and they're very much a part of the whole operation. They are actually guiding a lot of the external work on the radio station. They spend a lot of time at the radio station. I've only been at the radio station six months. And six I months. And I think if you'd six spent longer months. there. My experts tell me they could have turned this station around in 24 hours. You just... I've tried to help you. I've tried to help you get your breakfast show together. I brought the experts up for you to meet. You didn't want to meet them. I, I was not available. I was in Holland at the Whether time. you're available or not, you knew the guy was coming. That's a ridiculous excuse. Everything I've tried to do with you guys has got absolutely nowhere, and I just feel I've wasted six months of my time and I'm hacked off with it. You could have had all of these sitting in your garage and enjoy it. And what have you got now? A clapped out station that's going absolutely nowhere. I'm done. Thank you, Harvey, that's great. That's great. We I mean, can get on and do it. I'm very pleased with the way the radio station's going. It's going to plan as far as I'm concerned. We can't just turn it around just like that overnight. To me, Going forward, Big L is now the big loser. Sunlight, two more light. 